Good day guys, Rod from Think Bensonium here, and welcome to week 28 of Cayley Island Discs. Now, for those who are observant among you, you're thinking, well hang on a minute, he was only doing week 5 yesterday, so or he's only just released week 5, why are we on week 28? Actually, this is the week that I'm up to, actually, in real Cayley Island Discs on the website. My plan is, because I need to catch up, is every week I will do the week that I'm meant to be doing, but then every day I'll be doing the catch-ups until I bring it all up to date. So that way I, I'm slowly catching up with myself uh, on YouTube. Okay, so what was actually on this week? Uh, so basically I started, we actually up to day 190. So this is song 190. And I finally brought in a Carpenter song. Now, again, as I said, my musical tastes are very wide, so Carpenters, <laughs> my mum used to like Carpenters. Well, yeah, I mean, actually, I think um, Karen Carpenter actually did have a most beautiful voice, and if you listen to some of her uh, work, it's really fantastic. I mean, some of those songs she wrote were brilliant. The song that I particularly liked, actually, this is a, a more unusual song of the Carpenters, it's called Calling Occupants um, of Interplanetary Craft. And uh, it's, it's a pretty weird song, it's kind of, uh, you know, she's, they're, they're singing about the idea of making a contact with aliens. Uh, but again, it's just a really, really good song and it, it has a nice musical progression through it as well. And her voice is just so beautiful. So again, do check it out, it's, it's a really wonderful song, I think, to listen to and to, to enjoy. Okay, so 191, I then went with uh, Wider Shade of Pale by Protocol Horam. And again, uh, I, this is about the only song I know of theirs, uh, but it, as, as I say, as I'm sort of trawling YouTube, I, I obviously have quite a big music collection myself, I don't personally have this song, but I was, as I was trawling YouTube, this song sort of popped up, and I'm thinking, yeah, well, of course, that song really is in my consciousness. I mean, I think all of us uh, at my age group have, would, would remember that song sort of playing. It's just such a classic rock song, so how can I leave it out? So there it is, so it's in there. The, the clip is in black and white, but again, just enjoy it and it'll bring back memories for you. Um, it's funny, you know, some songs I, I associate very strongly with certain memories. Like I can sort of say, I, I remember in early COVID on discs, I spoke about Kate Bush's song, Wow, being associated with being in hospital and stuff like this. This particular song, it's funny, I don't actually have any memory associated with it. I just remember it in my younger years. So there you go. So I guess your brain can't link every song, but, but that's for me personally. Maybe for you it will have a, a strong connection to something. Okay, the next song I chose, song number 92, was a song by Deep Purple. Again, I just feel like I have to make sure I cover the sort of mega bands, and obviously Deep Purple was, was a very famous band. This is a 1970s song, Child um, in Time. And I picked this partly because it's a, it, I guess it's a more sort of gentle, I mean, uh, more gentle Deep Purple song. And um, it has, I, I quite like it in terms, I guess again, it's classic 1970s, has this sort of electronic keyboard in it. Dun, 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 and, and sort of just, yeah, the interesting guitar, an interesting arrangement. Um, yeah, it's just a really, really good song. So do listen to that. Okay, so uh, I then went uh, from that, for some reason, that song kind of led me to the Moody Blues and Nights in White Satin. And again, I guess White a Shade of Pale, Nights in White Satin, let's face it, they're all in that sort of bracket, aren't they? Songs that everybody knows. Uh, again, Moody Blues, a, a very famous band in a lot of ways, but probably this is their greatest hit, isn't it, really? Nights in White Satin. And, and again, a lovely song, really well put together. Um, yeah, I, I never get tired of listening to that song again. Though I don't have any any strong memories associated with it. Just just a, it's just a song that was there when I was growing up, and a wonderful song to listen to. The next song, one ninety four, was Bohemian Rhapsody, and I do have a strong memory of when I first heard this song. I first heard it. Uh, I remember when I was living in Seaforth, and I remember it being on television for the first time. Probably I don't know, Top of the Pops or something, and. I remember distinctly the split screen with, um, you know, the Queen singing the whole bit and that mega high voice. Galileo. You know what I mean. Anyway, so uh, yeah, that was uh, that was my distinctive memory of Bohemian Rhapsody. And uh, yeah, after that, hearing that song, I bought the album A Night at the Opera. I think that is probably, I still believe that's probably one of Queen's best albums, I'll be honest with you. Queen is one of these bands that... Um, I think they've written some brilliant stuff, but I also think they've written some pretty ropey stuff. I mean, you know, I mean, some of the Flash Gordon and stuff like that is just, oh dear, oh dear. But yeah, so I think there's a lot of variation in Queen, but, but their, their best stuff really is good. I already did one of their 
previous uh, songs in, in COVID Island Discs, which was You're My Best Friend, which is also from the album A Night at the Opera. Uh, but, but this is obviously their most famous song from that album, Bohemian Rhapsody, so it had to appear at some point. So here it is today. So there you go. I probably will do one more song from A Night at the Opera because there's one more song on that album that I think is absolutely spectacular. Uh, so you'll have to wait and see what that is because I haven't done it yet. Okay. So the next song, Day 195, was Sultans of Swing by Dire Straits. And again, I just really like this song. Uh, this is one of the first sort of songs that made Dire Straits famous. Um, and again, it's just classic Dire Straits. Uh, so again, I've already done a Dire Straits song all the way back very early on. We did Romeo and Juliet. Um, this is from a different album, but again, it, it, it's a wonderful, wonderful song. Um, captures, you know, Dire Straits at their best, I think, so so do listen to that. And the final song I did was a song called Learning to Fly by Pink Floyd. Now again, you'll see that you'll start to pick up that although I have a wide musical taste, I do have a centre of gravity, and, and some of these songs that I'm choosing at the moment are around my, my centre of gravity type music, and certainly Dire Straits and Pink Floyd are right in there in my centre. And... Um, this is an interesting song because just to remind people, so what happened was Pink Floyd uh, wrote an album called The Final Cut. So in that particular album, I already have done a song uh, from that album, but th this that album was actually uh, really very heavily influenced by Roger Waters. And in fact, the whole album itself is, is more a uh, protest against the um, Falklands War. And it's a, it, um, Roger Waters' uh, father was uh, killed in, I, I assume, World War II. So it's, it's very much along the lines of a, a real sort of war protest, anti-war anti protest album. Um, and after that, the final cut was meant to be their last album. That's when Roger Waters left the band. But they then reformed without Roger Waters. And, and the, the, the album they released was called A Momentary Lapse of Reason. And it was when they released the album that I had the... Uh, privilege of seeing them in, at the Entertainment Centre in concert after they released this album. And what was impressive was A Momentary Lapse of Reason is a really good album. Even though Roger Waters is no longer present in the band at this point, the album is really, really, really impressive. And um, it's got some great songs on it. I will be doing more than one song from this album as well. Uh, but this particular song is a really, really, it's their opening song of the album and it's a really fantastic song. Um, again, I think they opened the concert with this song as well, but you'll see why it's just a really, really... Um, yeah, you're just classic Pink Floyd in some ways, even though they haven't got Roger Waters with them. So, so there you go. So I'd say the one band that was able to continue to produce top quality music without without one of their main, um, you know, one of their main members. So there you go. So that so do listen to that song. Okay, that brings me to the end of day of week 28 of uh, COVID Island Discs. Hope you enjoyed this week. We will start week 29 as of tomorrow. So. Uh, You'll have to wait and see what uh, songs start to appear and fill up in week 29. If you do like some of the content of this channel, please do click the like button or hit the bell notification below if you want to see more of these videos. Again, we'll be going for many, many weeks more. And uh, yeah, if you want to see the actual website with all the links and the content, it's www.bensonium.com forward slash COVID Island. And again, you've got over 26 weeks worth now, actually I think it's 28 weeks worth now of material that you can look at, but I'll be covering it each week as we go along. All right, so it's just time for me to say goodbye, have a great week, and uh, see you next time on COVID Island Discs. See you guys, bye.